Welcome back viewers, um, KMI Community Connect welcomes you again today. Uh, uh, the purpose of today's talk is actually to uh, help you and uh, make you understand for uh, how to collect and how to interpret all the data that we have uh, talked about in the last few uh, presentations about assessment of uh, body fat and also to kind of uh, get an idea and um, dispel the myths and also how to um, get uh, an accurate uh, interpretation uh, rather than um, uh, understanding it in a different way where uh, the measurement of uh, uh, fat rather than being a, a skewed concept. Uh, uh, and then uh, eliminating the dogma and then looking at the data properly. So, uh, we talked about the three common methods uh, of uh, measurement, the methods of measurement BMI, body mass index, waist to hip ratio and waist and then the person body fat. Um, but uh, when, when you look at it from how to connect this information, um, we can once again uh, uh, bring about uh, the important topic that we talked about which is how the body mass index does not account for uh, muscle mass and uh, how it uh, also uh, under diagnosis people who have low mass uh, muscle mass and then over diagnosis people who have higher mass. So, in that context we talked about body fat percent. So, a body fat percent measurement for somebody especially who is either gaining muscle or losing muscle would be a better way to get a better idea about uh, uh, you know where uh, they have fat and how much of fat or muscle loss is uh, you know happening or fat fat loss is happening. Similarly, uh, we also talked about visceral adiposity which is the waist measurement uh, with the waist ratio and when um, the internal belly fat which is actually the fat that behaves differently location is very important we talked about that and so when somebody is losing weight for example and their body mass index is coming down and uh, but we don't know whether their waist uh, line is uh, decreasing so weight loss your scale may move or scale may not move but if the waist does not move if waist loss is loss is not happening then that's where we connect this and then to connect the waist and the fat again we can do the testing where we check the visceral fat with the impedance or uh, other uh, advanced techniques and find out where the fat is located. So, that also is one more way. So, um, what is the best test for body fat assessment? The best test is that test which is most appropriate for that patient. So, in other words, um, you, you know most appropriate means it all depends on the race, ethnicity, sex for either body mass index or for waste like how it, uh, people accumulate weight in different areas that is also based again on ethnicity, race and sex and also the location in various ethnicities and uh, races how it localizes based on various uh, factors including their genetics environmental conditions. So, that test which is most appropriate for that particular person is what is important. So, in other words, we have to take all these assessments and individualize for that person. So, it may be there may be no single test that is actually uh, useful or beneficial or accurate 100 percent by itself, but if you do um, more than one or two of these tests for better assessment and individualize based on the patient that would be the most appropriate test. So, so far we talked mostly about numbers everything is a number with guidelines we are taking two standard deviations if you are falling in the middle like any laboratory data then you are going one standard deviation two standard deviations or if you are an outlier falling uh, uh, on top of either side of the, the curve. Um, the bell curve. So, that is what we talked and this is all about numbers. Now, I am also going to be talking about uh, one more important concept and introducing one more important concept uh, which is the quality. A number is quantity 
So if we talk about the fat number, I am going to introduce this is new term called adiposity. It is a quantity or the number. Whereas the quality is function. You know, the, usually the function of a any particular organ or how it's working is determined by quality. So that is the function. And if there's dysfunction, then we call it as adiposopathy, which is a problem with all the pathology or all the clinical problems that we encounter is happening. So it can be a problem with the quantity, which is the number, which we talked about in all our methods of uh, measurement. And also it could be the quality, which we have not discussed. So if you generally look at it, a quantity can be normal or it can be abnormal. We can get various combinations or the quality can be normal or it can be abnormal. So you can have somebody with a normal quality fat and also normal quantity fat, which is what we talked about BMI, everything, the quantity that we measure. Uh, somebody can fall into a normal quality fat, which means it's functioning well again, but he can have abnormal quantity of fat, the quantity can be more or the other way around is a normal quantity fat with abnormal quality of fat, which we see a lot of people who are thin and who can get diabetic uh, or other metabolic issues. Or the last one could be abnormal quantity uh, in terms of ha having a lot of fat and also abnormal quality. So these are all the things that, uh, that the whole drama that happens with all the medical terms and all the diseases that we talk about or various combinations that each of us can fall into any of these categories or even in between. So you need more assessment. So the quantity and everything that we talked about adiposity is only the beginning. We are going to talk a lot about how to measure function and quality under all these variables. And um, we will be go dwelling more uh, deep into uh, the various metabolic dysfunctions and problems in the future. So my goal here is actually to make you understand the concepts better because if you understand the concept better um, then we can approach our uh, conditions better. Uh, you can never uh, solve a problem without knowing what the problem is. So I will be looking forward to talk to you again about more conditions which are all going to be focusing on the quality and what we do in our future talks. Thank you very much. I look forward to talking to you very soon.